Good morning, everybody. This is Dan Prey, and I'm a director at RSM South Africa. This morning, we're going to be talking about uh, ESG in the digital era and how we can harness technology for sustainability. I recently actually presented at a um, at a, the Institute of Internal Audit South Africa conference on digital transformation um, in internal audit, and one of the we, we actually ran a competition, and one of the the, the main um, responses in into our, our question and answer uh, session in the competition, for, I think about 75% uh, came back and said that uh, one of the key concerns for business actually is digital transformation. Um, but it's not in just, you know, certain spheres. It actually is in every sphere of business. Um, and today we're actually taking it through to the sustainability journey. Um, and we're going to giving it a little bit more of sort of an African context in terms of how technology is being harnessed through the continent, uh, the various forms of technology that's essentially being used, given the fact that uh, most of the countries here are developing nations uh, from that uh, from that perspective. Um, yeah. So in, in the face of, um, of, you know, pressing environmental social challenges, uh, African businesses are recognizing the need to embrace sustainability, not just as a moral imperative, uh, but as a strategic business decision. And at the heart of this transformation lies digital technology, acting as a powerful catalyst uh, for change. And that is really, um, it, it's really, uh, I suppose, powerful, certainly from an African con uh, continent perspective. We know that um, just due to the challenges that, that, are, that are being faced by our countries, um, in many respects, uh, we've seen the advent of newer technologies to be able to address those sort of social challenges. Um, and that could be the things of uh, you know, so an example is just mobile banking, uh, cell phone banking. Those type of technologies were essentially built and fostered within within the African continent to be able to address uh, various challenges. And we've always essentially been looking to technology uh, from an African perspective to be able to address a lot of our a lot of our challenges. And you know, digital transformation and sustainability is no different. It's not just about automating tasks or improving efficiency. It's about reimagining how businesses operate, interact with their environment, and contribute to a more sustainable future. From harnessing renewable energy to optimizing resource management and fostering innovation, digital tools are enabling companies to embed sustainability into their core strategies. So this presentation is going to explore how African businesses can leverage digital, digital technologies to drive positive ESG outcomes. Uh, we'll also delve into specific use cases uh, that essentially uh, demonstrate how companies can reduce their carbon footprint, uh, conserve resources, enhance transparency, and create a more equitable and prosperous uh, essentially future. The digital, rev digital revolution is not just reshaping industries, it's empowering businesses to become champions of sustainability. By embracing these technologies, African companies can pave the way for a greener, more resilient, and socially responsible future. So no one can afford to be a bystander in this fight for sustainability. What we're going to focus on is how businesses in Africa, especially those in the middle market, can leverage technology to not only become more eco-friendly, but also thrive in a changing world. Um, specifically from an, uh, you know, certainly from an African uh, perspective, there are some, you know, unique challenges that, um, that, that, that are presented sort of to us. Um, and from droughts to deforestation, uh, these challenges also present opportunities for growth. They're not just challenges. They, they, are, they are opportunities for growth and innovation. Consumers are becoming more aware of their environmental impact and are actively seeking out businesses that share their values by embracing sustainability and using technology as an enabler. Businesses can meet this growing demand and position themselves essentially in a position for, uh, for success. So you know, you we we have to be able to juxtapose all of the various challenges that is facing us. But with every challenge, there is also but there is also an opportunity, and this comes down to uh, a proper risk assessment in that view. It's not just mitigating risks; it's what are the opportunities that that also that also present us uh, present ourselves for our businesses. 
in terms of leveraging renewable energy technologies, there are various ones, obviously, uh, from a from a renewable energy perspective. Um, and these are some of the most common ones, certainly, that is seeing an uptake uh, from an African perspective, but does need to be, uh, I think, pushed a lot more, uh, certainly given our socio-political climates uh, that ranges from country to country uh, when we're looking at an equitable uh, future. So from a solar power side, you know, if we were to talk about clean energy, solar panels, wind turbines, hydropower, and even biogas systems offer reliable and affordable alternatives to fossil fuels. I mean, that I think is um, has been scientifically proven uh, that um, that these these solutions do do work. Um, imagine sort of powering your business with with the sun or the wind, just cutting down on your energy costs and re reducing your carbon footprint. It's not just about being green; it's about smart business at the end of the day. So, if we were to look at some of the examples, you've got like uh, that would apply to certain businesses, certainly uh, from a middle market perspective. Um, <clears throat> manufacturing company using solar panels on its factory roof, offsetting a significant portion of its energy consumption and saving it on its electricity bills. These aren't what you would necessarily call mind-blowing solutions, but they're proper so digital solutions that um, and, and technologies that can be employed to be able to offset the carbon footprint of our businesses. Um, from an agriculture perspective, uh, a farming cooperative, uh, could in, that invest in a community wind farm, providing clean energy to its members and generating additional income through solar panels. Farming cooperatives are quite uh, widely used, certainly throughout um, uh, throughout Africa. A rural community which establishes a micro hydropower plant, powering homes, schools, and businesses with re renewable energy. These are areas that not just private sector needs to focus on, but certainly the public sector also needs to focus on. Uh, from a biogas perspective, a simple implementation there could be a restaurant that installs a biogas system to process food waste, generating clean energy for its kitchen and reducing its, its environmental impact. It's not just about thinking, you know, really big. It's if we were to just reduce that and condense it and think about how can we be more energy efficient? Just asking that question. Um, and that applies to digital transformation in general within our businesses. It's how can we do things better? not just better for the bottom line, uh, but certainly better for um, our environment, better for our communities. When it comes to these types of technologies, we have to focus on optimizing resource management. Um, and certainly the three key areas for us um, is uh, precision in terms of agriculture, uh, smart water management. Um, I mean, that's absolutely critical for us, uh, certainly from a from a South African aspect and, and, and certainly from an African, uh, African aspect, and then waste management solutions. So resources like water and energy, we know are precious, especially in Africa. Um, and then technology can, can help us use them more wisely. Um, they are use cases that have already been developed and being explored in terms of the usage of drones to monitor crops and apply just the right amount of water and fertilizer um, or installing smart meters to track water usage and detect leaks. By reducing waste and improving efficiency, we're not only helping the environment, we're also saving money at the end of the day. Um, another, so a couple of examples in, in each of these areas. So from an agriculture perspective, um, you know, a farmer that does use uh, uses precision agriculture to apply fertilizer only when needed, reduces, reducing the fertilizer cost and minimizing the environmental impact. Uh, if we're thinking about a hotel in the hospitality industry, which installs smart uh, water meters and lead detection systems, reducing water consumption and saving on water bills. Um, and once again, a manufacturing company which implements recycling programs and partners with a waste management company to convert its non-recyclable waste into energy. So how do we go about essentially embracing this type of digital transformation for sustainability? There are key technologies that is essentially underpinning um, this type of digital transformation journey. Uh, chief among them right now is certainly things like cloud computing, um, IoT, the Internet of Things, and AI and machine learning. 
um, from a digital revolution perspective. So cloud computing helps us reduce energy consumption by moving our data uh, and applications online. Uh, the, the IoT part lets you monitor everything from energy usage to the location of your products in real time. Um, and AI can help you analyze data to make smarter decisions and optimize, optimize operations. Uh, from a cloud computing standpoint, uh, people might think, you know what, um, surely if we're moving stuff to, to, you know, just data centers or to just moving it online, uh, we are, it's, it's actually increasing our, our, our carbon footprint, certainly with the use of, of data centers. Um, I think that that, uh, that was true certainly maybe five, six, seven years ago um, when this type of, uh, you know, cloud computing uh, journey just, just was essentially taking off. Um, but technology has gotten cheaper um, and the way in which uh, technologies become more energy efficient um, in terms of the way data centers are cooled, uh, in terms of the way, uh, you know, data is stored, uh, being able to utilize uh, various different types of technology to ensure that we that cloud service providers are actually offsetting their carbon footprint given the amount of energy that it takes to be able to run you know data centers uh, that has evolved drastically over the last few years um, and and cloud computing service providers and data center providers uh, have ESG is actually one of their top strategic objectives uh, in order to be able to offset their, their carbon footprint and moving to essentially net zero from that aspect. So I, I think that when we're thinking about our digital transformation journey, um, looking at sort of a cloud first strategy is certainly one of the key aspects um, from that aspect uh, in, in terms of in terms of evolving. Um, it's one of the areas where if you're still starting off on your ESG maturity journey, it's one of the areas that you can actually kick off a lot sooner um, instead of, you know, just immediately diving into supply chain, etc. So all of this innovation is, it's not just for the sake of innovation. We're doing it with an objective in mind, and that is essentially for a greener future um, to try to approach, you know, uh, a, a net zero, a, a net zero future and being able to achieve various um objective certainly from a from an environmental um an environmental aspect this innovation is key to tackling environmental challenges businesses need to invest in research and development um but none of us are islands we need to be able to collaborate with others and support green entrepreneurs um this imagine developing a new eco-friendly products or services that meet the needs of your customers and contribute to a more sustainable economy when we're looking at these types of R&D initiatives, it all starts with asking the question once again, how can I uh, change and do things better in my business? When you ask that question, you can't just think about the bottom line. You need to be able to think about the triple bottom line. And that encompasses sort of the ESG imperative or the ESG, your ESG objectives. Um, and as I said, we need to be able to think about who are we going to be collaborating with. If we're thinking about a, 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 a big supply chain, we are not essentially the only items or the, the end users in, the, in a particular supply chain. Uh, we need to collaborate with certain vendors, partners, all throughout our supply chain that shares the same values that we do as far as ESG is concerned um, and be able to work with them in terms of our our innovation and our technologies so that it's not just innovation for innovation's sake, it's actually properly transforming our businesses and our entire supply chain. Um, and that's where you're really going to not just realize um, your, your higher profit margins, but you're certainly going to be able to reduce the carbon footprint throughout uh, a supply chain process. And then also then part of that partnering is partnering with green entrepreneurs. Uh, this is supporting and investing in these green startups um, that actually drive drive innovation. These are in individuals that are getting grants uh, in order to, to essentially try to put their technology into proof of concept stages. And we need to be able to mentor and foster that, that type of innovation. 
So embracing supply chain sustainability with technology, we're going to focus on this and then the next part is essentially going to come into a collaboration for a collective impact. Um, supply chain in, in trying to be able to reduce the carbon footprint in supply chain is actually quite a challenge. Um, it is, it's not very easy to be able to get everybody to be able to play ball with each other. Um, and But this is where technology can really, I think, be a driving force in getting all the partners in a supply chain to align on um, a key goal as far as as far as ESG values are are concerned. And one of the key aspects in terms of the new uh, technologies that is that is driving this in um, is blockchain. Um, it's uh, utilizing this this type of technology uh, really improves the traceability um, and transparency in terms of in terms of supply chain, um, and that means essentially linking all aspects of a particular supply chain, having traceability of a product from manufacturing in terms of sourcing of materials all the way through to that end product being go in terms of going into the customer's hands. Um, if we're able to adopt the blockchain technology through this trace in using the transparency and accountability functions in this integrated and distributed ledger, uh, we're able to get that type of transparency that we need. The next aspect then using that, that type of, uh, of technology is to then optimize our supply chain. Um, and, <clears throat> and, and where that essentially comes in is looking at how we can essentially implement this into supply chain software and analytics. So we know we see a big drive to digital transformation um, as far as application, software applications are concerned, data analytics, machine learning, etc. But are we using it in the right way? Are we using it from an optimization perspective? Um, we're using it to certainly get data, but what data is it showing us? And are we acting uh, based on this data? Are we uh, making our decisions based on, on this particular data uh, to be able to drive our, our businesses forward? Uh, I think a lot of businesses are essentially using it to be able to increase their profitability, but I think when where they're lacking is using it to be able to harness or to, to using it to, to highlight gaps in the ESG journey um, from, uh, from that perspective. And I think that requires the business to really be honest in terms of what is essentially their, what is their carbon footprint um, on on the environment uh, in terms of the products that they um, that they make in terms of the services that they that they render and using this data not just from a profitability standpoint but to be able to highlight gaps in their business models uh, from a, in terms of supply chain optimization and then sustainable procurement. We need to be able to prioritize suppliers uh, with sustainable practices. And that goes back to what I said earlier on. It's who do we partner with? Do these individuals share the same values from an ESG perspective that we do? And it's not just about sharing values. It's about putting it into practice. So, you know, walking the talk, so to, so to speak. Um, do they have so the systems, the policies in place to be able to uh, to demonstrate that they align with your uh, with your organizational ESG goals as well, because if it's just you that's doing it, you're not going to be able to achieve um, this uh, the supply chain sustainability because you're only one aspect of a supply chain. And then collaboration for collective impact. Um, the public and private, so we're looking at public and private sector partnerships. I mentioned that earlier on that it's certainly not just the the private sector that can that can um that can address these types of challenges that we're facing from a South African perspective and certainly from an African perspective we need to have those those type of partnerships um and and you see it takes a collaboration between businesses governments NGOs and the communities to work together um and and, and leverage resources share knowledge and create the sort of systemic change that we need to be able to see I think that we've um we in certainly from an african uh, context perspective we we're, we're kind of driven by regulation um and if we were to change that mindset to say okay we don't necessarily have the fully fledged legislation just yet but does that mean that we should not be uh be, be implementing these practices does that mean that we should not be changing our business models um to be more esg focused uh certainly not 
we need to be, we can't just wait for the regulation to come in. Uh, this is all about being good corporate citizens at the end of the day. So think of it as a team effort to build a more sustainable future, um, a sustainable future for Africa. Um, from an RSM aspect, we um, we offer sort of an obviously a number of, of services from an ESG and sustainability standpoint. But one of the tools that I'm really proud of, um, I sit on our ESG leadership group uh, from an RSM international perspective with various colleagues uh, from um, our Asia Pac region, from our European region, and and from our, uh, our the, from the from the America side. Uh, we've developed a a free tool for uh, um, anyone that is interested in essentially assessing where are they on their ESG journey um, in terms of in terms of sustainability maturity. Um, it's what we would probably call a light maturity assessment. Um, and you, you can essentially be able to answer a few questions um, and it's not very complex, just being able to plug in, you know, yes, no, or maybe um, not applicable or partial. Um, and be able to to be able to then assess and get a report to say, okay, where do you where are you sitting from a maturity standpoint in terms of environmental, in terms of your social aspect, and certainly in terms of the government aspect, governance aspect. Um, and we giving we give very sort of high level sort of recommendations um, in terms of that report, uh, which you can you can then take and and use to be able to kick off your your ESG maturity if you are a bit more mature um, in terms of your ESG sustainability journey it still is a good tool to utilize to say well am i as mature as i think i do as i think i am uh from uh from that aspect um so i do encourage everyone to to be able to just go online go to our, our rsm.global uh services esg and sustainability page um and you will find it uh right center there in order for you to uh for you to just uh, click on it and uh, and take it it's about a you know maybe 10 to 15 minutes of your time um but it's going to give you quite a bit of uh, a bit of insights into where you are from an esg maturity uh standpoint and then lastly uh just from a conclusion perspective i think what I just want everyone to maybe take away from this is um, when it comes to digital transformation, technology is a powerful enabler. Um, there is a collective action for sustainable future, and this is by leveraging technology and collaborating with stakeholders. Um, it's not just about, as I, I mentioned before, about waiting for regulation to take effect. Um, the time to act is now, because by the time regulation takes effect, certainly from an African perspective, we are going to be falling behind um, in terms of where we need to be on our ESG journey. So, yes, technology is a powerful tool for businesses in Africa um, and to be able to embrace sustainability and drive innovation and achieve long term success. It's about more than just being green. It's about making smart businesses to business decisions that benefit both your bottom line and the planet. Uh, by harnessing this technology and collaborating with others, we get to create a brighter, more sustainable future um, for, for Africa. Thank you very much for, for your time today. Uh, I hope this was um, uh, enlightening and gave you some valuable insights. And once again, please, I encourage all of you to please do go to our, our website and, uh, and to take the survey on the ESG assessment tool. Thank you.